Hey guys, I thought it would never come to this, honestly. At the beginning of the year, it seemed like this whole quest would never end. Community participation was minimal, with only daily theories and multiple images of Japanese women, which may or may not be Jeff. It appears that only one interesting thing was accomplished. Well, one among many users stumbled upon a mysterious Japanese video, which, to everyone's surprise, revealed an early image of the creepypasta, with previously unknown terms to us. The search proved fruitless, and we could say that all hope was as lost as the image itself. We've reached the middle of the year, and somehow, the illusion or excitement that drove those interested in being part of this search began to fade. It was simply time to accept that this question has no answer. That's why our surprise was so immense when the bomb dropped. Her name is Mariko, and she is a new protagonist. The document containing all the information found will be linked below in the comments. The entire search and investigation were carried out by the Discord users e Trocken, Milk, Prime, and Lifted. On June 21, 2023, the research conducted by the aforementioned individuals was unveiled. I know we have been through a lot, and most likely, many are skeptical about alleged new discoveries. But let me share with you the facts and what has been uncovered, and perhaps you will understand why there is quite a certainty that she is definitely the origin of Jeff the Killer. You will also see that her story, as raw as the previous ones, fits in a more precise and even malicious way. I must clarify though, that while she could be the source of the image, it has not been found yet, as the search has not truly ceased. Unfortunately, we may never see the true image if she is indeed Jeff the Killer. You will understand why later on. This journey begins with the Discord user Eat Roskin. She was investigating a mysterious image on Gazo Box that piqued her curiosity. Despite being another nameless and identityless Japanese woman, there was certainly something distinguishable about her. The user tells us that upon analyzing the image, she was able to point out the similarities between this mysterious person and the image that the internet would come to know as Jeff the Killer. By this point, those of us in the community knew the drill. Perhaps there would be some interest for a couple of weeks, some tracking, and then it would eventually fade into oblivion like the hundreds of similar cases we've all encountered. But still, the coincidences were becoming clearer. For example, the hairline, the size of the forehead, or the very mouth, which seemed to be a complete enigma for many. Especially because everything pointed to this being part of the original image the emotion was reborn. But gropingly because after everything we've been through, it's not an exaggeration to say that anything can happen. The investigation continued in a stealthy manner, with a very small group of people taking on the task of delving deeper into the matter, carefully guarding every detail until they finally reached an answer. The investigation began in April of this year, and although the process has not been documented, we can assume certain things. For example, this user would discover the name of the girl, who was known in the prehistoric internet as Mariko. With her image and name, it would become easy for anyone with basic knowledge to find her. However, there was something suspicious about her. First of all, it seems that she became famous not by her own doing, but because of the editing of her photos to mock her. And the other strange thing is that someone attempted to erase all information about her, making this case increasingly intriguing. One of the things that was discovered about her is that she was an internet idol. While for us an idol is a girl who captivates a group of followers with her charisma or beauty, in Japan the concept of an internet idol is very different. The term was used to refer to women, primarily overweight, who innocently posted personal photos on their blogs and had the intention of becoming famous idols. 
As you can imagine, they are the perfect target for 4chan. The first recorded reference to Mariko is on April 14, 2004, on the Japanese forum Futaba. Although the important moment would come on April 29th of the same year when we were presented with one of the key photographs for this investigation. As I have shown you before, the girl in this photo is an exact replica of Jeff the Killer in every detail, except for the posture, which is not exact, but in all other aspects, it is identical. Her face was found thanks to the website Pineys, which helps track faces, and that's how the origin of this curious character was discovered. Initially, the photos appeared on a page that belonged to her boyfriend, where they documented their weight loss progress. But from what we could see, she was attacked because of her appearance. Contrary to what we might think, the attack did not come from the internet but from her own boyfriend, Suzukamaru, who would edit her face and share it on 2chan, presenting it as something comedic. Among the multiple edits, we have the ones you are seeing, so it can be assumed that the person who claimed to be her boyfriend, or at least that's what they said on the blog, had basic knowledge of image editing and tended to edit Mariko's face frequently. Between May 20th and 22nd, 2004, there were more threads about her, mainly speculating that she would become the new viral meme in Japan. By the way, it was this behavior that led us to deduce that perhaps the blog, although claiming to belong to Mariko, was actually managed by her boyfriend, and she may not have even been aware that such a page existed. Additionally, it is possible that the boyfriend's initial intention was to monetize the hatred towards his partner. Souza also contributes something important to the investigation because, in one of his personal images, we can see a background very similar to the one in the Jeff the Killer image, so it would only be a matter of deduction. Fortunately, the world is not so dark, and when people realized that the harassment was actually coming from Souza, who claimed to be her boyfriend, it greatly outraged internet users, leading them to promote attacks not against Mariko but against Souza. And it is understandable, as some testimonies describe the situation as a kind of violation of human rights. The page was closed in the same month of May 2004, and it seemed that Mariko's story had come to an end. The first version of Jeff the Killer's creation remains unknown, as well as the reason behind it, or who made it. There simply isn't any information available. All signs point to it being someone among those who harassed Mariko, perhaps even Sousa himself, who created an absurd image. They may have used references from Japanese legends or manipulated the girl's face, possibly by whitening it to create a white powder effect, adding Mr. Potato Head-like eyes, and subsequently adding a black gorilla to create shadows. And in this way, the legend of Jeff would be born on the internet. Currently, a large part of the community considers Mariko as Jeff the Killer. For some, it is a fact, while for others, it is a hope. I wouldn't be sure of anything myself. This case actually reminds me a lot of the one I explored in my previous video. We could say it's a path that wasn't further explored, and no additional evidence was provided to even suspect that Shirai Kiko was Jeff. In Mariko's case, it is believed that there are three videos of her, described by users who claim to have seen them as very disturbing. They mentioned that she appeared uncomfortable and disturbing in those videos. It is also known that Souza had a certain fondness for giving a dark and sinister touch to the photos he edited of his girlfriend. There is hope, but at the same time, this theory is discouraging. It is highly possible that those videos have been permanently erased from the internet, and this search will never come to an end. There is only one aspect that could bring us some consolation, and that is the fact that there is a time gap of more than 10 months between the closure of Souza's page and the publication of the first image of Jeff. Additionally, there is no trace of white powder anywhere in the blog, which leads us to believe that the image did not originate from there. Perhaps, just perhaps, the person who created the image still has the original. On the other hand, I only found this image. I must admit that the girl in the photo bears a striking resemblance to Mariko, and in fact, after comparing this image with that of Jeff, I briefly felt that I had come across the original image. After considering the context, I wouldn't dare to assert anything. 
In fact, I found the photo while searching for Mariko's face. But it seems to come from a dating site where a man's story is told about meeting a girl in China and getting married after three days. It sounds a bit fake, but upon closer analysis of the image, I noticed some subtle differences. So, we didn't really find anything. The reason why it's so difficult to find information about Mariko is that 5chan conducted a massive campaign to remove all her content due to the inappropriate manner in which it was shared. I suppose it was some twisted morality coming from people who would attack you for posting a photo of yourself. In fact, I still feel that it generated trauma among the Japanese because it is quite common for faces to be posted on Yahoo for people to judge whether someone is attractive or not. It's certainly very different from what we are accustomed to here. Returning to the topic, I think it would be worth reevaluating some aspects of the case. For example, if we are dealing with a harassment case, and if the original image could represent trauma for the girl, should we really continue investigating? I mean, other cases of lost media have been completely halted out of respect, and I find that logical. Although I can understand that perhaps for some, it is justifiable as the intention has never been to harm her but simply to solve a mystery. I only present you with both sides of the scale, but the final word is up to you. Lastly, I want to add my humble opinion as someone who has been part of this community for a long time. It would be quite disheartening if Mariko isn't Jeff. I must admit that not all the evidence is conclusive because, although it is true that their features are similar, it wouldn't be the first time we encounter something like this. It seems to me that the true reason Mariko aspires to be Jeff the Killer is not because the evidence is undeniable, but because the character aligns most accurately with all the clues we already had in the case. She simply fits with everything we have, and frankly if it's not her, I feel like the entire case would collapse, and people would lose almost all interest in the topic. Perhaps it's my bias, maybe it's just the desire of a community to solve a mystery, perhaps it's just a consolation. And we should learn from our past mistakes and not get carried away by the slightest resemblance to Jeff the Killer. I also want to take this opportunity to say that there are more than a few individuals taking advantage of the topic to blatantly lie to your face, claiming that they are capable of solving this entire case in a couple of TikToks. I feel that many of the people who show you the first face of a Japanese woman they find on Google have no idea how complex and time-consuming digital forensics can be. I don't know either, and I have great respect for those who do. If I had to guess, I would say that finding the image, if it exists, would require intense investigative work and not mere chance. However, at the same time, this is the internet, and it wouldn't be the first time someone played a prank on us by creating fake pages and such. I'm not saying that's the case this time, but remember that it has already happened in this case. This is Gasper's paradox. And this never happened.